jump into the games, shall we? Uh, at the time of recording, we're also live streaming this, so shout out to my chat. How you guys doing? Okay, wonderful. E4. I'm not going to do anything complicated to start. I actually, like, I, I play the French and I play the Karo Khan, but I feel like at 1200, um, people aren't as familiar with this. So I'm just going to play, you know, standard opening principles, getting my pieces out. Okay, he castles. I'm just going to play knight f6. Again, uh, this is really for people who don't have an opening space. You know, they're just developing and, and taking the center and... H3 is a good move. It prevents bishop g4. I'm going to play h6 because I want to prevent bishop g5. It's actually kind of annoying. The most common way for him to play is like this. Um, and now, yeah, this this is... Okay, this is just the sign of a player that doesn't really know what to do. I'm going to offer this trade of bishops and see what he does. At the elementary level, uh, he's doubling my pawns, but really I'm opening the f-file. And we see this uh, commonly in part 1. Rook b1. Well, I think with these last two moves, it's very obvious he wants to play b4. Is it something that I need to stop? I mean, I can just play a5 that, that does prevent b4. I don't really have to, though. I mean, b4 is just bishop b6. Now, doubling his pawn, wh what on earth is that move? What on earth is that move? Okay, there's a very cool tactical motif here. The bishop x-rays like this. So I'm going to play b5, and I actually, he has to take me. This is not a free pawn. Knight a2 is so weird. What a move. I guess he really just wants to go here. Okay, he plays back. Uh, if I take, and he takes, he has doubled pawns. I really want him to take me, though, for instructional purposes. Um, show you that, okay, well, that, I mean, he, he, just, he just really doesn't want to take my bishop, but... He just forgot that I have two things on the square. It's better to stick with the knight here. Um, and then get to this position. So now the knight is under attack. I'm going to bring the knight back to c3. Or not. Or he's going to play that move. So, so far, two mistakes by this 1258. Miscounting attackers and defenders. Uh... The knight is still hanging, so he needs to bring the knight back, but now there's another problem, and that problem is that, oh my goodness, he... This bishop is just... This bishop has been his blind spot, like, throughout the entire game. Okay, at least he finds that move. Let's go here and attack the queen. This bishop is just a reign of terror. Look, I mean, like, it's it's done so much damage on this diagonal. This poor guy. Um, and, and we'll come back and analyze, really, like, what... Uh, what has been the problem throughout the game? So queen is is targeting the bishop, but it's guarded. I talked about this in part one a lot. When you're winning, uh, there's a couple of ways to play. You can either simplify the position to make it into an end game, or you can use your material advantage and try to create some attack. Try to make your position better, looking for checks, captures, and attacks. So first things first, I am just going to try to improve my position. I'm going to play queen f6. This is just a useful move, getting the queen out some potential in the future. Uh, to put some pressure here and connecting the rooks on the central files is always good if you don't have an immediate way to create danger okay we're up material so simplifying is good for us it's fine to trade the pieces if we're up uh now i'm gonna play rook e8 and the threat is e4 to fork two pieces in the center of the board this is unguarded okay that's not a bad move uh but when he pushes the pawn he Excuse me, he weakens that square, so I'm going to play knight d4, um, looking for a trade of knights. Again, when you're winning, simplifying is a pretty easy way to go. You know, just getting the game into the end game uh, and not blundering anything. That's an attack. We put the queen in the center, and we are attacking this pawn. Also, it's important to use your pawn majorities, okay? So c5 and c4, always a good idea. Uh, the bishop is very strong. It controls the promotion square. This bishop is glued here forever. Uh, he did not guard the e4 pawn. So that is three mistakes so far by my opponent, uh, where and where he just had a blind spot for undefended pieces. Um, that's actually not even an attacking move. So let's see if he takes this. Let's see if he forgets that I do have a bishop defending that from a distance. That would be four blunders. And he did. Wow, this bishop was like... I mean, the amount of material that that bishop won throughout this game is crazy. Like, the bishop won a pawn, 
another pawn, a knight, and now a rook, just for the value of one bishop. Okay, now he's he's really reconsidering his life after after I took on f7. Wow. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that just shows you, you know, the long-range power of the pieces. I mean, if, if anything. King h1, I mean, all right, probably the easiest thing to do here. Uh, get down and dirty here with the queen, uh, trying to attack everybody. He should probably play queen f4. Okay, that move is fine. And now the fastest way to create checkmate chances and just winning the game. Uh, we can simplify and win the endgame here. Now I'm going to play a move like, which is going to trick him. I'm offering a queen trade, but I'm actually also threatening mate because of the pin on the king. And I, you know, I think he's not going to... Okay, he trades queens, fine. But now I obviously will create the pass pawn. <clears throat> I can't go here and here because he would be taking. So I'm going to defend the pawn first, then play rook f8 and rook f1 to get the rook away from e1. That was pretty clever that he did see queen takes e3 mate. That's not even sarcasm. Okay, rook f1 check. And uh, we will be promoting a queen. But again, we, we didn't do anything too complicated. Um, in, in the opening, bishop... What's the fastest way to get mate here? Probably bishop d5 to try to take here. And that's mate. Okay. Good game, sir. So, in the opening, again, for you king's pawn players, like, nothing complex here. It's a little bit better to bring the bishop out first so that you don't have to run into the fried liver attack. So bishop c5. Here you need to be able to deal with c3 and b4. So the Evans Gambit. It's a little bit tricky if you're an, if you're a king's pawn player. Um, so again, preventing this pin with h6 actually is good because if if your bishop is not back here, knight c5 with bishop g5 can be annoying. If bishop g5 is allowed, then you should play bishop e6. A3 is just not a good move because it's not like it's a blunder. It just doesn't accomplish anything. That that that's really that's really it. It just doesn't. You know, I can also go a6, but in a symmetrical position, the only way you're gonna ever win the game is if you're creating imbalance, right? Like you can't just play on symmetry the entire time. So imbalance in the piece trades, bishop for knight, imbalance in the pawn structure. And that's why I was really pushing for this trade. He never ended up taking. You know, you saw the game. He ended up blundering along this diagonal. But opening the F file is a good way to create some imbalance. This pawn is doubled and not guarded, but it's impossible to get. I mean, he can't go knight g5. He has no way to target it with anything else. So then oftentimes you can use the uh, open F file uh, with moves like knight h5, knight f4. Putting the king here, maybe using the g pawn. So... Um, I am getting challenged, I think, by a few folks in the chat. Let me accept this 1200 game. Uh, so I'll go e4 now. Again, I'm just following basic opening principles up to 13, 1400. Okay, interesting. He's playing d6. I mean, against this, the most principled is to just take the full center. It's pretty, pretty reasonable. Knight c3. Okay, knight f3. We are not doing anything too complicated here to start the game. Just bishop e2. I mean, you can take, but it's also, you know, I'm, j I'm just developing my pieces. Like, that's that's all I want. I'm going to castle uh, in, in an opening where they don't take the center right away. Uh, I might want to play h3 to prevent the knight from ever coming to g4. That's always a pretty, pretty useful move. Just be careful of useful knight hops in the beginning. Um... Okay, queen d2, the rooks are connected. Now, again, this is a very tough position. Wow. Okay, I was about to say it's a very tough position, but it seems like he's not going to castle. He's just going to attack my king. Well, the most principled response to an attack on the side of the board is to strike back in the center. I think I'm going to take in the center just to open up lines to his king. And the other thing you have to notice is he put three pawns on dark squares, which means that this square is up for grabs. Well, only question is, how the hell do I get there? <laughs> um, okay, let's play rook d1. Yeah. And the idea might be to reroute the knight. Okay, it's going to take a while, but I'd really like to get to that square. So I'm going to play knight h2. And we're just... We're thinking here. How, how are we going to... My opponent seems to be playing extremely confidently. Also rerouted his knight over to g6. 
thinking about what to do next. Now, knight f4. Wow. Okay. Knight g3. It's a very strong knight. I mean, he's playing quite logically, rerouting everything to f4. Um, I mean, so far, this is the strongest player I've played through the entire guide, I would say. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it's a legitimate 1200. That's all I have to say about that. I mean, so far, his play through 14 moves has been extremely cohesive. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, so either he's a genius or he he's a psychopath. He's sacrificing on h3. Normally, this is good if you can reinforce the attack. I don't know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that it's the perfect sacrifice. Now, when this, hap excuse me, when this happens, you know, you can attack the knight... But you also can just, you know, maximize the safety of your king, and I actually think that f1 or h1 do just that. So I might go to f1, split-second decision, that's what I'm thinking. You know, if these pawns aren't here, it's actually a lot more dangerous for me, but because they're there, they block the file, and he doesn't have reinforcements. Good rule of thumb. You want to attack an enemy king? The rule of plus two. You need two more attacking pieces than the opponent has defending pieces. Okay, um, and he doesn't have that right now. He only has a knight attacking my king, and I've got a ton of defense. I've got my knight, I've got my light squared bishop, I've got my dark squared bishop. So whenever you want to attack the enemy king, look to have a material advantage attacking the king of at least two pieces. That's usually what I say, the plus two rule. Uh, I just realized that this move might have a tactical problem with it, but he didn't, he didn't quite see it. Uh, if I take that, always look for checks, captures, attacks, takes, takes, and then coming in here with check looks just decisive. I mean, it just looks like I'm going to check and win the knight. Okay, so 18 very, very good moves by my 1200 rated opponent, and then all of a sudden, catastrophe. Completely falls apart, um, you know, thinks the longest that he had all game, and then, and then this is the longest that he thought all game for 26 seconds, and he just doesn't make a good sacrifice. So... Uh, one of two things happened there. I jinxed him. I complimented him so much that he ended up blundering and getting nervous. Uh, or the other one, which was illegitimacy. Called him out. But you never know. Uh, that's just the free knight. And the rook is hanging. And again, um, how do you spot a move like this? Just look for checks. If, you know, you gotta look for it. If it's not there... Or if there's a check, but it's not any good, don't play it. As simple as that. Bro, well, so... Whoa! Um, yeah, he, 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 he's missing everything now. That's not good. Uh, he only has one legal move here. And now let's try, to find, let's try to find checkmate. Let's do a little calculation exercise. So we do have this check. That's not a good check. That's, that, that is a good check. That's a check, and that's a check. Um, so let's do this. Bishop c5, king e6... And actually, we can bring in the second bishop, and that's just me. So, this is his only legal move. It's always smart to calculate the moves that minimize the opponent's options. Okay, so he has only one legal move. After this move, he has no legal moves. That's usually the best way to go. Um, you know, the other way was bishop g4, and, and that would have not quite been mate, because he has f5, although we, we win everything, but... Yeah, here we see white's pieces utilized to the, you know, maximum extent, and the queen actually hangs out in the corner and cuts everything off. Uh, that was, a, that, that was a, you know, an interesting game. He played this kind of Philidor Black Lion setup. Again, we just developed and, and went toward the center. Uh, this is a very, this is a very interesting system, not castling, just going for g5. So I guess this guy was playing, yeah, like the Black Lion style, you know, that, that style of opening where, where you, you, you go aggressive and early on. Um, I think that's what it's called. I see some, some folks in my live, live chat calling it that. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's keep it rolling. We're, we're 1245. Uh, now we get a 1294, so we still haven't crossed into the 1300 territory. Again, I, I, for now, I'm just going to play King's Pawn against King's Pawn. Uh, but I will start playing more setup-based stuff in the next game. So Bishop c5, we just had this in the first game of this video. That game went castles, d3, knight c3. This guy plays d3. I'm just going to copy him with d6. Um...
Yeah, be still. I mean, this is so weird. Like, you shouldn't be thinking on move five, you know? That's why it is good to have some openings foundation. Because if you're thinking on the fifth move of the game, you're just reinventing the wheel. Whoa! What is this? This ain't good, man. I mean, all grandmasters would be playing this if this was a real thing. That's just a free bishop. So the logic here of what he's doing is, you know, I can't take that. He's sacrificing material uh, to get to my king. But if you just don't panic and just go back, like, there's nothing here. This is not how chess works. You know, queen h5 check, you just block. If queen f3, you can play knight f6 or even queen f6 offering the trade. You need plus two. I just said that in the last game. You can't have one piece attacking the king. That's not going to win the game. You know, this is like the expedited uh, fried liver of some sorts. Like, what is knight c3? You can't sack the bishop and then go knight c3. That doesn't make any sense. But there are some traps here. Okay, there are some traps. Here's a trap, for example. If we attack the knight, okay, you would think he has to go back with the knight, but he doesn't. Uh, there's a, a concept in chess called danger levels, and to avoid the attack on his knight, he is going to counter-attack the king. And now we don't have g6 anymore, right? Because queen h5, we're going g6. But if we play h6, we no longer have g6 as a possibility. So let's just develop a piece for now, and then go h6. And then if we really want to get our king to safety, we can just castle by hand. Very common technique. Uh, when when our you know when our king's positioning has been shuffled, I'm joking that his play has been erratic, but it's not it's not that bad. I mean he he is playing a little bit tricky. Like for example, now does he have any danger? No, we're covering that square, so we do have h6. We also just have very simple move knight d4 here, uh, which attacks the queen and that square on c2. Um, and you know he actually has to go back. Just yeah, and now we're gonna kick out this knight. So th this is the way you punish overly aggressive play in the opening. This is going on YouTube. Yes, if you guys... Uh, oh, okay, so I can take that, but we know that from all these positions that the pin here is vicious. This is a very, very powerful pin. Uh, and the idea is to shatter the pawn structure that white has. Uh, I still can't castle, which is rather tragic. Um, so let's think. I mean, do we want to castle by hand for instructional value? Do we want to take and then take to simplify? Let's take, he'll take, and then we'll take the bishop. And the idea is just, just to simplify. I've been preaching this throughout these videos. Just simplify, bring the bishop back. The only problem we have is that our king is in the middle. And we can't castle the king because he played bishop takes f7. So we will need to castle by hand, which is when you move the king, move the rook, and then slide the other uh, piece back. I think we'll just copy him, bring the queen to the center here. Uh, which way are we going to castle? I'm going to let I'm going to let folks in the live stream determine. You guys let me know quickly. Short or long? Which way are we castling by hand? He castles long. All right. All right. Uh looks like everybody's saying long. Somebody said you can't. I don't know what you can't means. You can always castle by hand. All right. So this is probably not the best move in the position right now, but I'm going to play rook d8. That is an excellent move. I actually was hoping he wasn't going to play that move. So his position is rather closed, right? And he's striking in the center, maybe anticipating my king walk, but also just the fact that my king is in the middle of the board. So it's, it's good for him to do that. Now, I want him to take. I do not really want to take myself because then, you know, he gets this. But he also opens the queen. Oh, man, this is... Ugh, you know, pawn moves. Queen is out now. This is not easy. All right, let me play a6. This is a prophylactic move, taking away b5. Now, not a lot of 1200s would play a6. A lot of people would react to this. You know, a lot of people would just continue with their plan and not realize that king d7 runs into this. That's a good move for me. So, this is not a good move for him. He does not want to close the center. Ah, I should have gone to f7 if that was my plan. I rushed that. That's my bad. Okay, so I guess I'll have to castle by hand this way. So I should have castled by hand like that. But, you know, the lesson here is also that plans change. Oh my goodness, he is he's really coming after me. But I have something here. f4 is a blunder. And the way that you find this mistake, checks, captures, attacks, every move. 
he makes a move okay so we can take that but he just takes back then we can take this but it's guarded attacks that last move allowed us to attack something always look for maximum danger bishop g4 right that last move enabled us to find that move and again if you just scan this briefly all titled players don't say these things out loud to themselves but okay queen c4 is that attacking anything not really that's guarded so i'm just gonna gobble the rook i don't have a lot of time so i do need to play a bit faster um okay let's go for the castle by hand we only have 19 seconds but there is two second increment so i will not be flagging um and now we're up a rook so probably the technique here is simplify win a few pawns and get the position into an endgame. So rook f8. He takes... I can take with the pawn or the queen. My queen looks pretty... Oh, no. Okay, even a title player can make a mistake. In time trouble. I gave him c7. That was not smart. That was not smart. Okay, rook d7. And uh, those on YouTube won't see this, but we did just get a big raid. Thank you, Alessia. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we're currently doing the part two of Gotham Guide, which is when I'm basically playing... From a low rating, queen's under attack. That's guarded. Don't take it. So we're currently twelve hundred to fourteen hundred, playing against uh, folks here. Yes, we castled by hand. Excellent. And now we can actually maybe even use the open C file against him. Pressure here as well. So we've castled by hand. The king's out of danger. Everything's good. A lot of different concepts in this game. Okay, like I said, open C file. He just moved his queen off the C file. Let's go bulldoze him. That is a free pawn, though. That is that pawn is free. You can take it if you want. There's a lot of good moves right now. Uh, no threat, so let's create a threat. All right, and now when he moved that, this was hanging, but I can also take it with the knight. I'll take it with the queen. I want a queen trade. If he takes this, then I bulldoze in with this pawn. Okay, he trades queens, which is probably not very smart. Uh, he kills all chances of survival. Any threat there? No. All right, what do you do? B5. Let's play on this pin, try to go B4. He plays 96. Let's not forget, the, the rook is under attack. Let's bring the rook to the open file. Rook, open file, those things go hand in hand. This knight's very annoying. I might consider trading it off. That's exactly what I'm going to do, because he just checked, you know, he attacked it. If I get rid of the knight, my position becomes a lot easier to play, actually. So... I could take with a pawn attacking the rook, but then I give him a passer. I'll take with a rook, then offer a rook trade. This game is all about simplifying, so I'm not looking to use my material advantage to win the game. I am looking, okay, to just get this into a rook end game, and rook is devastating here. I'm just going to take every single pawn he has. Just be careful about his past pawn. I don't even have to take that. I can now begin to push my pawns. Don't be afraid of this. Your rook is always strong enough to stop it, not to mention that your king is in the square. So I can just push. That is... And I always have that in my back pocket, so I will just push. Now I have to stop the pawn, because he was a square from queening. H2, and yeah, I mean... I am queening, and so is he, but the problem for him is that this happens. And now probably the easiest way to win... Cut the king off on the back rank. I could have made a second queen, uh, and now just walk my king around and mate him. It's just the easiest. King here. And that's actually made in one. Okay. That, was, that, that game was hard work. I mean, even for me, like, the, this guy was very solid, even, even though we've been up a piece since move five. So, just a couple of things. I mean, don't be put off by stuff like this, all right? Like, bring the king back to the home square. The rule of plus two, he doesn't have two more attacking pieces than you have defenders, but the other thing is danger levels, okay? Danger levels. Don't throw in moves like h6. That move actually just loses the game, which is why his strategy wasn't that dumb. Like, I was making fun of it. You know, he, he blunders a bishop, and then he just plays a developing move. I'm sure he's beaten people like that. Like, he didn't just decide to do this in this game. I'm sure he's beaten people like this in the past. So, um... Right, like this is uh, this is important. Danger levels. You always need to look for checks, captures, and attacks, but also for your opponents. Like super, super important. H six just loses. That's why get developed, get everybody going. Um, all right, we're twelve sixty five. Let's keep it rolling. I, somebody asked me if I should play five minute games. Maybe.
maybe, but but this is also not so bad. And I mean, you can always, you know, rewatch it later. Another e4. Okay, I'm going to play the King's Indian setup, which is an opening that's not e5. There's two types of openings. There's theoretical openings, which is when you need to know which moves to play at the exact right moments, and there's setup-based openings. Setup-based openings, you just look for the same kind of position most of the time. So here we go. This is the King's Indian setup. You don't really care the way he sets up. That's a very weird way to set up, by the way. Is he going to castle long? No. Okay. Well, he prevented me from playing bishop g4. I'm going to play knight c6 and attack this pawn in the center. If he pushes, I can just hop in anyway. This guy's, this guy's pr playing pretty well. Okay, he's playing pretty well so far. Opposite side castling means that he's going to be attacking in the, in, in, you know, on the king side and maybe in the center. And I don't want to give him this pin, so I think I'm just going to attack his bishop right away. This is a pretty annoying bishop. And he just leaves. Okay, well that was very kind of him. Now I can play e5, and if takes, just knight takes. He pushes. Now... Hops to the side here don't really do anything. You might be thinking, I'm getting toward his king. You're not doing anything. He's just going to attack your knight, and here you have no moves. In the King's Indian, we very often slide behind the pawns. And for the King's Indian, wow, he is... This guy is aggressive. Goodness, he wants to go g5. Um, let's route this knight backwards to rook, queen on the same file. Common attacking idea in the King's Indian is f5. Man, this is going to be a very complicated game. I can already tell. This guy is Smurf, playing really well. I'm always curious. It doesn't look like it. Takes, takes. Hello, friends. Let me know your thoughts thus far. That move is the first weird move that he made. That move got out of the threat of the rook, but it doesn't do anything. Um, let's attack the bishop. Now the bishop has to retreat. And maybe we can get real tricky here and like... Uh, okay, so... So this is a good question. Is my king exposed? Your king is only exposed if your opponents have a clear way of attacking it, okay? You need to look at the G file. The G file is a bit open, but he's, I mean, he's pretty far from an attack, and I can always tuck my king to the H file behind my pawn and cover myself with my pieces. Uh, not to mention that here, you know, I do just have a way to kick his queen out, so it's not really, it's not that dangerous. I was thinking of F3, uh, and if he takes, knight F6 actually traps his queen. The problem with F3 is that I just reopened this. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set a trap, I think. How do we set a trap here? Can we maybe make him play the move knight f3 and then trap his queen with knight f6? Like, what if we play a6? I'm just being tricky. Oh, he did it! And we trap his queen! A very natural move. Just developing, looking for rook g1, but that was actually his queen's escape path. And now his queen's trapped. Ha <laughs> ha! That's how you set a trap. You know, because I want knight f6 right away was good. It would have forced this queen back. But we wanted him to play the natural move knight f3. Okay, and now he just gives away a queen for a pawn, which is rather silly. And we are obviously completely winning. So he played completely reasonably. Okay, check. And this is an example of how our king is not actually that exposed. We're only dealing with one open file. And it's, you know, it's not so bad. We're just going to trade the rook and everything's fine. So good lesson there. Don't just jump in with your queen. Your queen should not be leading the attack. I mean, she should be coming in after the reinforcements. Knight g5, is there any threat? Now, rook g8 is not a good move because of this. Uh, I can take... I also can play a move like bishop g4, which attacks the rook and is guarded. Okay, he attacks me. Now, probably bishop just back here is completely reasonable. And, oh, I blundered a fork. <laughs> Oops! All right, well, it just goes to show you. I mean, you know, I got off the diagonal. The good thing is, you know, despite getting carried away and blundering that, I'm still up a queen. So even if you win the knight or the rook, it's not, it's not so bad. All right, now let's look to simplify. We're getting the rook off the board. 
And now I guess he's letting us go down here. Let's follow the path of the rook. He sidestepped, so we're just getting in here. The position has a closed nature. Closed position means a lot of pawns on the board, usually locked up or just far apart from each other. So how do you get in in a locked position? Open files and also pawn play. So we are going to attack the bishop. And then the open files are on that side. So there is an infiltration point. It's on the king side. Well, East Castle, Queen side, but it's on the king side. So we get in with the queen. Uh, I can take that. I can also just push. In fact, pushing renders this knight pretty useless. Because he has to go here or here. And that is under attack. But after I just play a5, look at this knight. I mean, it's dominated by a pawn. c3. I can take. But let's not forget that I also was creating my own threats. Right? I mean, this is, this is why I came here. Uh, I can take that as well. It does have an extra attacker. And, I, and I, I do have this as well. And by the way, I have this very, very, very nice thing here. Right? I mean, I, that is hidden in all of this. Is that I have this, and I also have removing the guard. Two things guard the bishop, but if I take the knight, and then he takes, and I take the bishop, I win the bishop. But let me take this bishop, and... Uh, well, the queen and the bishop meet here. Queen to mate. My, uh, my chat is screaming about my time. Guys, titled players are always aware of their time. Don't worry. Don't worry. I see my time. I know. And I know that I have a two-second bonus, so that, that comfort for me is, you know, a, lo a lot of people, time for them induces panic. But it's, it's, it's not so bad. I mean, as a titled player, we've played 25 thousand games probably where we've had less than 10 seconds <laughs> like, so um uh, yes exactly someone in the chat says his real strength is 1700 not 12 1280 so um i know that people watching uh you know their chat uh you know the time might be freaking them out um Let's keep it rolling. Go for another game here. I might play a Karakhan in my next one. I might not. We'll see. Getting a lot of people in my rating range. Okay. E4, D4. Let's go for a D4. Go for D4. And just play normal stuff. I can go for a London. Um, I'll go for a Fian Keto setup. Knight f3, g3, bishop g2, this kind of stuff. Very solid. This is, uh, this is like from Keep It Simple. And then c4 and knight c3. So pretty easy setup here. And I'm just going to take the full center. Okay, he gave me the full center. I'm going to take the full center. Now we have a King's Indian defense by my opponent, which I just played with black. Very common idea here is to, to push. Uh, and let me close the center. Okay, so we just had this structure last time. He comes out with knight c5. He's attacking this pawn. I'm going to bring my knight back. Maybe I can pin him. I can also play queen c2. Uh... Let me go knight d2. This setup, it doesn't have any sort of name. Uh, it's kind of the Catalan. This setup is, 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 is known as the Catalan setup uh, with d4, c4, knight f3. Bishop g4 attacks my queen, but I can just attack his bishop. That's the one thing about this I don't really understand. And the other thing is, oh man, that's not a good move. This knight doesn't have a permanent home here. I can just attack it. You know, with b4. That's actually why, if you're a King's Indian player, you need to play a5 after you play knight c5, because now your knight just gets dominated on a6, okay? So I have more space, and in a position where you have more space, you really can call the shots, right? 
Do I have to take that? No. Can I take that? Is it good for me? If takes, takes, I get B5. That's a fork. But if takes, takes... I mean, I don't really... Let's do it. For instructional value, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. Yes, everybody. Everybody gets their rating back. Don't worry. Uh, and now, knight B3. The knight move opens up the queen, attacking the D6 pawn. That pawn is a very big target, and he just didn't see that. <laughs> so... Uh, the Catalan is super theoretical, but not at this level. Uh, if you just want to play the Catalan for a setup... Is that a free pawn? That might be a, not really a free pawn, because he has some tricks with the bishop. I'm a little scared of taking that pawn. Let me just reinforce on the d-file with my rook. Something like this. Um... So it's not super theoretical because people aren't going to be playing the critical lines. They're just going to be, you know, just developing their pieces in ways that look logical. Let's finish our development with the move bishop e3. And now our rooks are out, all of our pieces are out. Our queen is a little bit precariously placed, but she does have a way back home. And knight d4 doesn't really... Oh, it does, actually. There is a trick here. Knight d4. Knight d4. Knight d4 actually is the best move. Okay. Do we want to trade queens? I mean, not really, but also whatever. That's not free anymore. Uh, let's just bring our last rook into the game. And okay. This is another instructional game. Closed position. How do we proceed from here? What are the right pawn breaks, right? All closed positions, you're looking at pawn breaks. B5. F4. F4 is not that great. I feel like F4 just opens stuff unnecessarily. It opens the bishop, maybe, for him. His dark squared bishop. It also maybe allows knight g4. Um, that's a weird move. Let's try to focus on the queen side. So let's play like a4, b5, maybe c5. Maybe knight c5. The trade like this. Seems like that. that's a very powerful spot for our bishop. Um... That is an attack here, but the idea was just also to march forward. So, I can take with the knight or the pawn. I mean, generally, it's good to keep your things together. So, maybe I'll go c takes b5. And we have a very clear target on a7. Okay, that is an attack on our knight. Are we pinned? Not really. We can move the knights. Can we move it to d5? Is that is that the right move? Tough decision. Knight d5... If he takes, I take. He takes my rook, I take. He takes. Gonna be a big trade. Yeah, I kind of like this. And I like it because at the end, a is gonna be a problem. Let's not forget that when all the rooks come off, a is just... It's gone. And when a7 disappears, our majority of pawns on the queen side... Again, queen side pawn majority is gonna be a big problem. But here I also have what's called an in-between move. I don't have to take the rook. I can take like this... And then he takes, and then I can take. So the difference would be that I don't have to shift my pawn forward. It's very tough to tell if that's what I want or not. So I think I'm just going to take the rook. I don't know if this is the right decision. So he takes, and now I don't want to take with the bishop, because I don't want to lose the target there. So I'm going to take with the knight. And again, he doesn't have a... He, his only clear way of guarding this is to play knight to d4. He needs to interpose. This, he has to go here. And he does. Okay, to his credit, he actually... He does play the best move. Not bad. So I need to find a way to get rid of this knight. Uh, knight e2, knight b3 are not possible. But if I play king f2... And then knight e2... That looks pretty smart. Knight e7 was not working, guys. Because even though it was a fork, he had taken a rook already. So I'm, I'm down a rook in that position. F4 I can play, but it doesn't actually help me. Because when he takes, the bishop is still guarding the knight. This and F4, though, might be something. He doesn't have to move the knight, though. He does not have to move the knight. And he does have a path here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and then play this timely move, which I think will put all hopes to rest. I'm covering this, and now bishop b8, bishop a7. That's the pawn that I need to get to. And I, yeah, I don't think he's really preventing that. Oh, oh, that's his idea. Oh, this, this guy's resilient, man. 
Okay, so I can take, but do I want to? I kind of want to make a pass pawn. I also kind of want to give a check. Just to force this king to be passive. And maybe throw in f4 to activate my bishop. Ooh, that's looking real nice. Activating my bishop to get to the c6 square. Bishop h3 is nice, but unfortunately it's met with f5. It looks really good, though, to, to, win, the, to win that bishop. Um, okay, can't I just walk my king right up to your pawn? I don't think that... What? <laughs> he was trying to sneak it past me. Uh, what is going on here? Okay, check. Again, I have six seconds. So I need to focus. Oh, that's just mate. That, that's just mate. In the middle of all this endgame stuff, his king just got locked up. He just had nowhere to go. So, he actually had to play the move king e6, which is unnatural because you don't want to step out of the way of the pawn. But this is still losing, and it's losing with the very simple continuation push. He has to take. Take, take, and take. And, uh, I mean, I, the real reason this is winning is I just have two connected passers. He can get back in time and guard, but we would win this in the pawn end game. And we might not even have to do that. You know, we might not even have to push. Uh, we might not even have to push the d7 pawn. We can just be patient here. You know, we can, we don't have to rush anything. In, in, in end games where you have like two pawn advantage, there is no need to, to, to tactically win the game or something. You, know, you can just play king d3, king c4, king c5. Let's play one more game. I mean, I, I am kind of bummed that we're not getting like, you know, 13, 1400 opponents, but uh, we are seeing a lot better fights today than we than we saw in the, you know, in the 1000 to 1200. Uh, okay, I'm going to play in English. Somebody requested an English. An English opening starts with c4 and then g3 and bishop g2. This is, this is what you do. You fight for the light squares in the center. So somebody requested this and this is how you play it. Another setup based opening. Normally what you do here is you play e3, knight e2, and then d4. Looking for, for, a, for a d4 push. This guy's playing very aggressively. He's pinning me already. Um, let's attack the bishop. So when people pin you like this, sometimes it's good to just ask what they're going to do with this bishop. I can't go d4 now, actually, because of that pin. Ooh, is this, is this a sign that he wants the castle queenside? Okay, if he wants the castle queenside, I'm going to play a3. And I'm waiting for him to go there to start an attack on his queen side with b4. So again, be mindful, he's not castling. Don't, oh, there it is, there it is. Okay, b4, here we go. We already got a bit of a head start. Um, I wanna go a4, but then he takes. I wanna go b5, but then he goes here. And then he blockades me. So maybe the best way to play this position is to prepare the move a4 with a move rook b1. That might be the way to go here. a4, a5 is coming. So it, there you go, he plays g5. So opposite side castling, we're just throwing throwing fists. But I think he doesn't realize that when he goes g4, I don't have to take. In fact, g4, I go h4. When you're pawn storming on opposite sides of the board, blockading, blockading is what you want to avoid. You don't want your pawn attack to be blocked either by pieces or by pawns. So right now, I don't really want to play b5. Because then I don't really have a way forward. In some ways, I actually prefer to take to open the file or play even like bishop a3, which is a bit of a weird move. But both of those moves prevent him from kind of blocking my attack. I'm going to take. Uh, this move almost is a bit illogical because he's just opening my rook, which is bold. And now knight b5, and I already have a tactical threat here that wins the game. Uh, he kind of stopped it. I don't know if he got lucky, but the threat was bishop takes c6 and then knight a7. I don't have that anymore, but I do have a move like queen b3. Now, I can't play queen b3 right now. Or can I? Are there tactics here? I don't think I can play queen b3. Queen b3 hangs the knight, which is a bit of a bummer, but I would love to play queen b3 if it was possible. Uh, queen b3, he takes. I can move the knight back. Okay, that kind of works. Kind of. Uh, I can go here, 
And then if he takes my knight, let's first of all, let's see if he sees that. Let's see if he sees that my knight is hanging. The idea is that knight c3 attacks b7 and also the bishop. I can win the bishop back while threatening mate. But first of all, let's see if he even sees this. <laughs> I mean, if he doesn't see that, then I just get away with, 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 with that move. Um, okay, he, he didn't see it. He plays kind of a logical move. You know, b is not a problem anymore. I need to get rid of these this kind of dark squared guards here. So let's maybe bring in the knight to c3. So we are, you know, we are mobilizing. We The only thing I don't like yet is that, you know, he does have this. But I, I said g4, guys. Don't take. h4. How is he going to get in now? So he, he made a mistake of getting blockaded, and he doesn't have a way to get to my king now. Right? This is, this is just a problem. I mean, he probably has to play something like bishop g6. But even that, like, that, that attacks my rook. Whoa. Oh, he does, that's not a good move. You do not want to trade pieces that are guarding your king. Um, okay, I need to get the bishop out. And the fastest way to do that is bishop a3, bishop b4. Once I get the dark squared bishop away, b6 is a lot more vulnerable because I have a5 coming. And I predict we win this game by checkmate within a few moves. That's a good move, though. Let's, let's not forget that he is attacking here. Uh, I can sacrifice the rook, but I mean, honestly... Eh! Let's do it. Let's play bishop b4. He's gonna get really excited. He's gonna be like, ha ha, idiot, he lost his rook. But he's not gonna realize that I'm the guy with five attacking pieces and he has one defender. Yeah, he takes, he got really excited. He's like, ah, now he has no defenders. He doesn't have anything defending his king. The queen's not really guarding the king. Queen's over here. So he doesn't have anything guarding his king anymore. A5 is coming, knight b5 is coming. Look at this bishop. Like, this bishop's not a three-point bishop. This bishop is worth at least five points. You really want to tell me this rook is a five-point rook? Come on. And so that's kind of like where relative value comes in, is it, rook for bishop isn't always that, you know, drastic of five for three. Sometimes the rook is not really worth five points. My rook is worth five points. It's involved in the attack. It's backing the queen up. But is his rook on h8 really worth five points? Is his knight on f6 really a three-point knight? My knight is. Right, so relative value of the pieces um, is something super, super important that's going to come up uh, throughout this video. Um, that's a good move. That's a good move. It, it, at first glance, it looks like he's just losing a pawn, but he's going to make me trade stuff. I'm going to put that on pause. I'm going to play a5, mainly because if he takes, it's just mate. Like, it's literally just ladder mate. Um, and I, you know, this was always my plan. I wanted to get rid of his bishop so I can play a5. That's another good move. Defending this pawn. But I should have a way to just win here. Uh, to just break through and win the game. First of all, I'm always looking at deflection tactics. And I think they work. So is he going to take with the pawn or the queen? Queen, ah, uh, queen's very dangerous. I have discovered check. Queen a4 check. And now the queen is hanging. So he has to guard, but I should be able to deflect his king away and win. Yeah, yeah, this is winning. So check, and now the very nice move, knight takes c7 check. Queen is hit two times, the king has to guard the queen, and this is just the perfect example of why you need more attackers than guards. And he had no guards except the queen. The queen cannot be the guard of the king. When you trade all the pieces that are guarding your king, it's just going to lead to bad, you know, bad stuff. I don't have a force mate as far as I see, but um, I have check, and then I can even win this pawn now with my bishop. And now all my pieces are playing. Okay, he never got in. We blockaded his attack, and he never got to my king. So bishop d5, creates rook f7 as a threat. I don't really care if he takes. I am up a queen for a rook. And... Uh, yeah, this was like a very smooth game. I mean, uh, obviously, but, you know, the guy playing white's high rated, but just navigating his, you know, the ideas that he was, that he was in, employing. Okay, queen g5 check. I had a little tactic here. I actually, I missed it, but rook f7. The rook is guarding over there, so check. 
and I guess he's not going to resign, so we will win this by promoting a second queen. That is the easiest way to go. Just make a second queen, and um, e everything will be uploaded. Yes, guys, if you're not subscribed already on YouTube, please do that. Part 1's already up, so King G2. Uh, just be mindful when there's only one rook involved in counterplay. This is completely fine. And uh, we win. We win. That was a nice win. A spite check. So, the English, again, an opening when you play g3, bishop g2, knight c3, and develop like this, trying to push for d4. Um, this is a very, very aggressive like way to play, actually. I mean, he played very well. Couple instructive moments. Right here. Which way is he castling? It looks like, he, if he's not castling kingside, it looks like he's castling queenside. Opposite side castling uh, is, you know, is something that can be caught on very quickly. So just play a3. This is not a wasteful move. We're trying to go b4. And then really, the, you know, the rest of the game was just navigating how to attack. Avoiding blockades in pawn storms. Uh, you know, you, I didn't play b5 right away because he's just going to go here and that I can't accomplish anything. I want to open this position. So now I take, you know, I, I don't play b5 just for the sake of attacking a knight, right? So knight b5, king b8, queen b3 like this. And the one instructive moment here, right, is this. Like he can take, somebody asked me, can I go knight a7? Uh, I did see this. This, this. this does look very, very strong. The idea is that there's a threat here. If he takes with either of these pieces, uh, I take on b7. And... The only problem with this is I think there is this move. Alright, so that's really the only drawback of this. But my idea was that I can at least win this bishop back by playing the move knight c3. Okay, we're almost at an hour. And then if he at least blocks, I'll go like this. Let's play one last game. Let's take it one last game to the next hour. <clears throat> and let's play... Uh, let's play d4. And let's end on a London. Shout out to Eric Rosen. Love that man. London system is another setup-based opening, just like the King's Indian. Let's play c4, though. Let's play the London with c4. So it's like a Queen's Gambit fusion. Again, putting the knight on c6, we saw this in two games in part one. This is not good. The knight does not put any significant pressure on the center here. But if you play the c-pawn and then the knight, that's actually a lot better. Okay? So... And then you can play like rook c1. And now when the file opens, you actually have some legitimacy. Bishop b2, just playing against the pin. Just developing. What is this? What? What? Why would you? Okay, I don't know. He's wasting time in the opening. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. Yeah, this is, I mean, this, this move makes sense. Um, but I lost in all this chaos is the fact that the knight was actually guarding d5. And then I can just take. <laughs> like, if I took with the pawn, his trick was that he would just do this. Whoa, that is, uh, that is a tricky move that doesn't quite work. So he wants me to take because then he's going to get this. But first of all, then I take his knight. And second of all, let's just follow the yellow brick road. I mean, he gave me this. I might as well take the next thing. Yeah, so th this guy just... I mean, I, I played solid improving moves. And on move 12, I'm already up three pawns. And I didn't do anything complicated. This guy just got aggressive. Blunder d5, c7, b5, and... I mean, you know, we've had a lot of fights today. This game's not quite a fight. Okay, so h6, I can't continue to take. Let me just bring the knight right back.
Look at this knight. It completed its little diamond journey. It won three pawns. Uh, and next... Uh, we will just start simplifying. Let's just start trading the pieces. Uh, we're up three pawns, so... We might as well just... Simplify it. That is a good move, though. Um, I can't take that because the queen's hanging, and I can't take like this because I'm actually losing this trade. That 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 is a good move, but I can throw in like an attack on his queen. I mean, it's not super complicated, but it's very nice. I mean, he he is, you know, he is working through the pin on the queen. Oh, I got my bishop trapped. Oh no! Wow. <laughs> Even IMs can blunder to 1290s. I, see, I've made mistakes today playing too quickly. Okay. Uh, well, if I take that guy, then I'm going to win back two pawns. So let's keep the bishop. Uh, sorry, let's keep the knight. And this is a, th a pattern that we saw yesterday in a game where we got to put the knight on f5. So it's knight to the side as long as it has a way back. Uh, he takes... Yeah, that maybe allowing this was, like, not the smartest. Let's just be very direct with our intentions, okay? Let's just play exactly as I said. We want to go knight f5, so let's play knight f5. It's a good move. Those of you that are Ben Feingold fans, knife f5. And this bishop is not really a bishop. I mean, its power isn't really felt. So I don't want to make a trade of queens because I am down. Okay. And queen g3 is next. So the count is bishop for four pawns. I have six pawns. He has two. Uh, I actually now have six pawns. And he has one. <laughs> so... Yeah, this is a... Oh, no. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> oh, he did so well. He honestly... But, but he just got greedy. He just wasn't thinking of my threats. And I mean, I couldn't have telegraphed this more, you know? Knight f5 and targeting the bishop on g7. And despite hanging a bishop, you always need to look at your opponent's threats. Oh, man. He, uh... Yeah, I made a mistake. Um, the, the, yeah, the best thing for me to do was not to get caught by this little trap. I just forgot that he could go g5 somehow. But yeah, bishop g3. Definitely bishop g3. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm safe. And if we trade everything, then... At least in this position, I, I end with b3 and I'm up two pawns. And I just use the queenside majority. Which, if you've been watching the whole video, a few games in the beginning, the game against the Ukrainian player... I had a queenside pawn majority with bishops, and then I ended up winning the guy, right? Uh, winning, uh, winning the guy. Winning against the guy. So, that was pretty fun. So, I mean, a lot of instructional games, and, you know, all of these games will be linked in the chat on YouTube. Um, again, you can, you can play through the video as slowly as you want. It's, it's an hour long, and there's a lot of different games and different instructional moments. Uh, if you need me to, you know, to reiterate on anything, put it in the comments. I know those during the live stream don't have the comments, but th this will be uploaded on YouTube. If you're not on my YouTube page yet, go there. Uh, and stay tuned for part three. In part three, we're going to hopefully get some 1400s, and then we'll start playing real openings. I'll be playing my courses and whatnot, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed.